Chapter 8, Lesson 4, Stars and the Universe. How do stars form? Stars form when matter comes together and starts to give off energy. A star is an object that produces its own energy, including heat and light. Stars can go through stages or cycles between their beginning and ending. Different kinds of stars have different cycles. The cycle of a star depends on how much hydrogen the star contains. A star cycle ends when it stops giving off energy. All stars form out of a nebula. A nebula is a huge cloud of gases and dust. Gravity pulls the mass of the nebula, most of which is hydrogen atoms, closer together. As the hydrogen atoms move closer, they collide with each other. The collisions produce heat and the temperature in the cloud begins to rise. When the temperature reaches at least 10 million degrees Celsius or 18 million degrees Fahrenheit, hydrogen atoms begin combining together to form atoms of helium. This process gives off tremendous amounts of heat and light. The spinning cloud has become a protostar or beginning star. The sun and other stars like it started with a medium amount of hydrogen. That hydrogen is the fuel that produces energy in the sun. For a few billion years, hydrogen continues to combine to form helium, and the star increases in temperature. Eventually, the heat forces the hydrogen on the edge of the star to expand into space. As the expanding hydrogen moves further away from the center of the star, it cools and turns red. At this stage in its cycle, the star has become a red giant. A red giant is many times larger than the original star. In the star's core, the temperature has risen to about 100 million degrees Celsius, or 180 degree, uh, 180 degrees, oh I'm sorry, 180 million degrees Fahrenheit. Helium atoms now combine to form atoms of carbon. And they've got a nice um, chart for you down at the bottom that takes you through the stages. Eventually all the helium is gone and the star can no longer combine helium to form carbon. Now the star begins to cool and shrink, becoming a white dwarf. A white dwarf is a small and very dense star that shines with a cooler white light. The white dwarf stage is the end of a medium-sized star cycle. About 10 billion years pass during this cycle. Since the sun is about 5 billion years old, it is about halfway through its cycle. What happens to larger stars? Stars that start off with a greater amounts with greater amounts of hydrogen end their cycle differently. After they become red giants, the temperature of the core of these stars increases to about 600 million degrees Celsius or 1 billion 80 million 32 degrees Fahrenheit. At this temperature, their atoms combine to form atoms of iron. Eventually, the iron core produces more energy than gravity can hold together, and the star explodes. The exploding star is called a supernova. Supernovas shine brightly for days or weeks, and then fade away. A supernova will form a new nebula. If a star is very massive, it may end its cycle as a black hole. A black hole is an object that is so dense and has such powerful gravity that nothing can escape from it, not even light. Stars are characterized by their size, color, and temperature. The sun is a medium-sized yellow star whose surface temperature is about 6,000 degrees Celsius, or 10,832 degrees Fahrenheit. Giant stars have diameters that are 10 to 100 times that of the sun. Supergiants may have diameters that are 1 thousand times that of the sun. Neutron stars are the smallest stars. Planets around distant stars are too dim, small, and far away to be seen even through a telescope. How are these planets discovered? Remember that gravity causes all objects to pull on other objects. When scientists observe a star whose motion is not smooth, they infer that another source of gravity is present. 
By measuring the motion of the star, astronomers can calculate the mass and distance from the star of the possible planet. Using such methods, astronomers have discovered what may be more than 160 planets beyond our solar system. Most of these planets are probably gas giants. However, scientists have reported finding what may be a rocky planet orbiting a red dwarf. Scientists calculated that the planet was five times more massive than Earth and three times farther from its star than Earth is from the Sun. Temperatures on its surface were thought to be about negative 360 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 220 degrees Celsius. Astronomers found this planet by analyzing data of the star's brightness for changes that indicated that a planet passed in front of the star. This method is called gravitational microlensing. What are constellations? When people in ancient cultures looked at the night sky, they saw patterns called constellations in the stars. Constellations were often named after animals, characters from stories, or familiar objects. Some constellations have been very useful to both ancient and modern travelers. For example, if you can see either the Big Dipper or the Little Dipper in the night sky, you can follow the line that their stars make to find Polaris, the North Star. If you travel in the direction of Polaris, you will be moving north. If you ever become lost in the woods or at sea, look for Polaris in the night sky. It will help guide you to safety. The ancient Greeks divided the sky into 12 sections. They named some constellations after characters from Greek myths, such as Orion, a hunter, and Hercules, a hero. The Greeks named other constellations after animals, such as Taurus, the bull, or Ursa Major, the big bear. The ancient Chinese divided the sky into four major regions. The name of each region included a color, an animal, and a direction. For example, the western region was called the white tiger of the west. Within each of these four major regions are seven smaller areas. Star distance. How far away are the stars in the constellations? After the sun, the next closest star to Earth is called Proxima Centauri. It is about, oh my, 40 trillion kilometers, or 24, oh wait, let's see, thousand, million, billion, 24 trillion, 800 billion miles away. Because stars are so far from Earth, Writing their distance in kilometers becomes awkward. To simplify the writing of such distances, astronomers use a unit called a light year. A light year is the distance that light travels in a year, or about 9.5 billion kilometers, or 5.9 billion miles. Proxima Centauri is 4.2 light years from Earth. What are star systems? If you look at the night sky through a small telescope, you can see individual stars and some of the planets in our solar system. If you look carefully, you might see hazy patches of faint light. These hazy patches are galaxies. A galaxy is a huge, very distant collection of stars. Each galaxy holds billions of stars. The universe is full of galaxies, and each galaxy varies in size and shape. The three basic shapes of galaxies are spiral, elliptical, and irregular. Spiral galaxies are shaped like a pinwheel with many arms. They are fairly flat with a bulge in the middle. Our solar system is in an arm of a spiral galaxy called the Milky Way. The individual stars that you see in the sky are part of the Milky Way galaxy. Some spiral galaxies only have two arms. These are called Baird Spiral Galaxies. The arms of this kind of galaxy spread out from a bar of stars that cut across the center of this, the galaxy. Elliptical galaxies are rounded. They can be shaped like an egg or a thick pancake. They do not have arms. Irregular galaxies do not have distant shapes. 
They may look like clouds or blobs. Star clusters. Some stars in a galaxy form clusters. These clusters range in size from a few hundred stars to more than 100,000 stars. Globular clusters are shaped like a sphere. They hold 100,000 or more stars. If you look at a star cluster without a telescope, the star cluster would look as if it were a single star. Binary stars. Sometimes when you aim a telescope at what looks like a single star, you discover two points of light instead of one. This happens when two stars form near each other and rotate around each other. These two stars are called binary stars. The prefix bi means two. How would a blinking star indicate a binary star? An apparently single star blinks because it has a dim partner star that regularly comes between it and an observer on Earth. When this happens, the dimmer star blocks the brighter star's light from reaching Earth. It's as if you repeatedly passed your hand between your eyes and a lighted bulb. The bulb would appear to blink each time your hand passed in front of it. How did the universe form? Astronomers have found evidence that the universe is expanding like ripples made by a stone dropped in a pond. The universe includes all matter and energy, including everything from the tiniest parts of atoms to the tremendous explosions of dying stars. If the universe is expanding in all directions, it had to have started at a single point. That point was like the spot where a rock drops into a pond, sending ripples outward. The Big Bang Theory states that the universe started with a Big Bang at a single point and has been expanding ever since. Evidence suggests that the Big Bang happened about 13.7 billion years ago. And that is the end of Lesson 4. That's the end of Chapter 8. Hopefully you did some quick checks along the way. Good luck on your chapter review, and good luck on your chapter test.